Okay, so this is still the math from Monday, March 23. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go over how to do the work on the work pages that you're supposed to be doing. So we'll do a couple of examples from each page. If you notice up on the board, that's what I want you to use as your title for when you're answering these questions. Make sure you have the date and the page number so that when I mark all this stuff, you get all the marks that you need and I know which page is which and which answers go with which page, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you're answering all of the questions in your notebook. If you run out of pages in your notebook, please tell me and I will bring you a new notebook. All right, so if you take a look at page one, it says exercise A, write each fraction, eight, write each ratio as a fraction in simplest form. Remember, simplest form is just a fancy way to say lowest terms. They mean the same thing. So if you take a look at number one, it says that you've got 12 to 20. So it's asking you to write it as a fraction. So 12 to 20, and then put it in lowest terms. So you have to figure out what number can I divide into 12 and 20 to make it smaller, to make it lowest terms, to reduce it to the smallest fraction it can be. So if you look down your multiplication chart, use your multiplication chart, that's what's there for, you look down, you know you can use 2 because they are both even numbers. You can't use 3 because 3, even though it can go into 12, it can't go into 20 evenly. And you can also use 4. You can't use 5. 5 only goes into 20. It cannot go into 12. Um, and you can't use 6 because, of course, 6 can go to 12, but not 20. So we're going to use 4. So you're going to take the 12 and divide it by 4, take the 20, divide it by 4, so that you get lowest terms. This is exactly like what we did two weeks ago when we were talking about fractions. This is still lowest terms, same procedure. So 12 divided by 4, how many times can 4 go into 12? It can go in 3 times. And 20 divided by 4, how many times can 4 go into 20? can go in five times. So there's your fraction and lowest terms. So that's how you do this page. You take the ratio that you're given, and then you change it into a fraction, and then you change it to lowest terms. That's how you do all of the questions on the first page. All right, if you take a look at the second page, you've also got your must and your should. Now, these are all ratios that are different units, and so you're going to have to do that unit conversion that I talked about in the lesson video. So, when you're done answering all of the questions on page one, don't forget that you need to indicate that you're moving to page two so that I know which answers go with which. All right, so if you take a look, let's look at number two on page two. It says one quarter to one nickel. So I don't want to do one to one because a quarter and a nickel are not worth the same thing. So what I need to think about in my head, I need to convert those into a unit that are the same. So when you're dealing with money, just think about how many cents you have, how much money do you have. One quarter is 25 cents. Two, one nickel is five cents. So I have taken my quarter and my nickel and I have converted the units so that they may, are the same now. Still a quarter, still a nickel, but it's worth 25, it's worth five, and now we're good. Don't forget that this sheet is asking you to also explain in lowest terms. So if you need to move on to lowest terms, you put your equal sign and then you figure out what can I divide into 25 and 5 to make it the smallest possible ratio. And of course, they both end with 5, and so I know I can divide them both by 5. So 25 
5 divided by 5 is 5. Your ratio symbol stays the same. And then 5 divided by 5 is 1. So my actual ratio is 5 to 1. I've taken my units, I've converted them into being the same unit, they're both cents. And then I took my ratio and I built it into lowest terms. So that's how you're going to do um, the questions on page two. I want you to take a look, we're going to do one more example. I want you to take a look at number nine. Number nine has 25 minutes to two hours. So right now I've got a ratio of 25 to 2, but minutes and hours are not the same unit. So I need to convert them into units that are the same, if I can, and in this case I can. So what, I, what you need to do, you need to think about it, right? So I can either convert them into hours, or I can convert them both into minutes. It's usually easier to take and use the smaller of the unit conversion. So if I've got 25 minutes, that one's fine. It's already where I want it to be. Two hours, I need to think about that. How many minutes is that? Well, I know in my head, one hour is 60 minutes. So two hours is 120 minutes. So I have converted the unit from hour to minutes, and I have 25 to 120. The units are the same now, and now I can reduce to lowest terms. So I need to think about what can I divide into 25 and 120 to make it smaller. So use your multiplication chart, of course. Now I know for sure that I can divide them both by 5. I definitely can't do 2 because that's an odd number. I can't do 3. 3 doesn't go into 25. I can't do 4. 4 doesn't go into 25. I can do 5. 5 can go into any number that ends with a 5 or a 0. So 5 divided by 25. I mean 25 divided by 5 is 5. So there's my lowest terms for the first one. And then 120 divided by 5, so what you need to do is you need to think about it, and if you don't know off the top of your head, that's fine. That's why we have outside calculations. So there's nothing wrong with popping over and doing a little outside calculation, where you take your 5, and you divide it into 120. 5 goes into 12, 2 times with 10 as the answer, and 2 left over. 5 goes into 20, 4 times, with 20 as the answer, and 0 left over. So my answer is going to be 24. 120 divided by 5 is 24. So this is how I expect you to do numbers on page 1, numbers on page two. Let's talk a little bit about page three. Now on page three, where did my pages go? Here we go. So page three, you've got your must, your should, and your could again. So that's good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about number five and number eight. Um, also number nine. So. When you're moving on, don't forget to indicate what page you're now working on. So we're now working on page three. And I'm going to do number five. So it says, state the ratios below for the whole numbers from four to 20. So whenever they're giving you that kind of information, it's always a good idea to write out that information before you start answering your questions. So. I know that I need to be working with the numbers from 4 all the way up to 20. So I'm going to write them down 